All right, as let's raise a question here for this week's reading. Who left the dragon glass weapons in Beyond the Wall that Ghost finds? Good Lord. You're just getting right after it. I mean, just I, let's I, absolutely. I, 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 I love I, it. I say let, let's go right into it. So, I mean, okay. The, the, the whole thing is is that when this is found, um, it's wrapped in a crow's cloak, right? There's there's that gray fabric material. It's what, seemingly, it's, it's what we think. Uh, it's, it's wrapped in a Night's Watch cloak. Um, it also seems to have been recently buried. That was that was something that I, in 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 rereading, and we even had a listener. We had a couple listeners reach out to us because they were when we first started, they were kind of sprinting ahead, and we had talked a little bit about um, Dragon Glass. And someone said, "Guys, don't forget that you know that was something. It seemed like it had been freshly dug. Also, then how does Ghost locate it? Um, was it the cloak? Is there some smell or there's something on that cloak? Was it was Ghost led there?" The whole nine yards. Um, it is still one of the greater. It's 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 a mystery, right? Um, we don't actually know who left that there. We we learn that John uh, turns well takes a few. There's some daggers. Those are passed out. Sam has one. Um, there's some arrowheads, which thankfully when they get all the way flat to flash forward when they get to Craster's, um, you know some of those are are passed around. They're they're very limited in their spearheads. Their their arrowheads. Uh, and their daggers, but um, and Sam's the one who tells us that they freaking work. We don't know why. We don't know what they are at first or why they're significant. But you know, anytime Ghost, I think John even is 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 keen on the idea that if Ghost found it, and the fact that he's also thinking about Benjamin. This is where I'm driving toward. You know, John is always thinking about his uncle Benjamin. And this whole chapter, when they find this, he's he's wondering what Benjamin would do, and and. You know, core and half hand is sh- is showing up, and we're going to this fight. John's hoping to find Benjamin along the way. Then he finds this cloak with dragon glass. Still can't find Benjamin, and he's talking to Mormont about it. So sometimes when when an author puts those two side by side, John thinking about a character, and oh, we have a mystery over here too. It makes people go, I wonder if those two are are one and the same. So that's sort of the obvious one that I think people jump to out the gate um yeah your thoughts yeah I'm, I'm, as i as as i'm just i'm looking on reddit here to see what other people uh have been saying and a big one is benjen stark that's what a lot of people say say it's you know we know that we know that mance raider is digging up graves right later um searching for the horn of winter right yeah uh, and so it's the some people are saying here benjen stark buried the dragon glass weapons and the horn of winter near the fist of the first men uh, because he knew that that would be a place that the Night's Watch would go if they were to march against Mance Raider. Um, I further believe, uh, let me see here, it says it was on this particular ranging that Benjamin buried the horn of Joraman wrapped in his Night's Watch cloak along with his cache of dragon glass weapons. Later in the story, Corrin Halfhand returns from a raging and tells the old bear that Mance and the Free Folk had been digging holes in the snow all over the mountains, searching for something, but what that something was, the Halfhand did not know. The Halfhand requested John join him and his crew, and they went looking for Mance to see if they could figure out what the king beyond the wall was searching for. This is, you know, when John's later captured by Agret. Uh, uh, kind of going on here on Reddit it says um, I believe Mance had heard or suspected the horn was buried somewhere near the frost fangs or the mountains north of the wall this is why the free folk were digging holes all over the place Um, whether Mance thought the horn was buried there uh, only recently or for decades we do not know in the books it is Ghost who actually founds the cache of dragon glass along with and a horn wrapped in the Night's Watch cloak when we see John north of the wall this this week's chapter um is at the first of the first men and ghost is also heavily connected to the old gods um in the books uh the bundle had only been buried for a couple of weeks or so as john noted the cloak had not yet begun to decompose he brings the bundle to castle black cleans it you know later um and gives the horn to sam and makes a knife for the old bear mormont with a dragon glass blade 
Uh, the horn of Jormon is the old cracked horn, which John gives Sam from the dragon glass cache. The one with the bronze on it, which was the metal they used back in the time the long night ended. So, uh, so, so, so people are saying it's Benjen, and then obviously this is going to be a big player later down the line. These, this, this horn and these, um, these, this dragon glass we we see here. So, uh, then they're saying, well, you know, the show portrays. Benjen as cold hands uh, as further proof they're setting this up that I don't believe I do not believe that them using Benjen as cold hands uh, justifies Benjen being cold hands uh, just because they did it in the show I actually feel like that was a nod and they didn't they need they need because Benjen literally shows up and then dies so I feel like they just needed something as a transition here's a cool way to do it um, I think I've, I've 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 been leaning more and more and more away from the idea that Benjen um is, is cold hands I, whether benjen is still alive or not i don't know maybe he maybe he got captured i mean if he if it is benjen who puts this dragon glass cash here he's then without a cloak in the north so well, that's and, not and, gonna help him yeah and that's the thing unless he that i was gonna bring that up so when you talk about cold hands then you try to say well benjen also wrapped all this dragon glass in um this this cloak and buried it uh, he maybe he took someone else's cloak because he did right. go north with other rangers so maybe he had a, a an extra cloak and he did that as as a marker puts it next to the fist that's that's interesting let me um s since we're in the chapter here i'm gonna i'm actually gonna read some of this where they actually find um the glass what's what's interesting is that when john is kind of trying to get out uh trying to he's approaching ghost and he's trying to call ghost to me now Ghost will look up from drinking in the stream, and the look that he has, that that John sees in his eyes, he describes it as terrible, like a terrible look, mm -hmm. and a fierce, a fierce, terrible look. And so then he follows. He follows Ghost, and he's like, he's thinking to himself, "This is madness, right?" He's among the trees. Uh, he was about to turn back when he glimpsed a flash of white off uh, just ahead, back towards the hill. He jogged after it, cursing under his breath. So again, he's he's following Ghost. He says, "What have you found?" And he lowered the torch, and this is a lot of some of what you what you said, but I think it's neat to hear it actually from the text, which is he yeah, lowered absolutely. the torch, revealing a rounded mound of soft earth, a grave, he thought, but whose? So he thinks it's a grave. We hear that Mance Raider is trying to open graves for, for some reason uh, to find this horn. And everyone says it's the horn of, of Jormund. But this ends up not being a grave. He thinks it's a grave, and it's not, right? Um, it's only two feet down. Not even, uh, let's, let's see. It's not even that far down. So he knelt, um, jams his torch into the ground beside him. He says that the soil was loose and, and sandy. Um, he pulled it out by the fistful. There were no stones, no roots. Whatever, whatever was here had been put here recently. Two feet down, his fingers touched cloth. Um, he had been expecting a corpse, fearing a corpse, um, but this was something else. He pushed against the fabric and felt small, hard shapes beneath, unyielding. There was no smell, no sign of grave worms. Ghost backed off and sat on his haunches, watching. Um, so his breast. So his breast. So there's that whole indication that he believed it was recently buried, like the, the like the soil. Right. Nothing had really settled. So, I mean, how recently, you know, within a month or, or within a few weeks or a few days, um, just moments ago, you know, <laughs> but, but like it's, right, right, it's, right. it's recent. Um, and so he's thinking it's maybe a treasure or whatever. Um, but the, he said, so he's thinking, is it, is it coins? Is it whatever? And we, he pulls it out and it is, it is exact. It's dragon glass, um, with the mate, with the maesters call obsidian. Had Ghost yeah. uncovered some ancient cache of the children of the forest buried here for thousands of years? No. The answer is, is no, because we just learned it was recently buried. Um, unless it was something that was moved, relocated or whatever. Maybe somebody else, a ghost didn't find it, but maybe Benjen or someone else found it, right? Right. Yeah, a ghost um, did not find yeah, find it originally. It's not like he found all this dragon glass, put it together. and then, Right. <laughs> ghost is over there. Right. You know? Yeah, he's like, hey, he's running all over the place. Here, 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 here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, as you said, so beneath the dragon glass was an old war horn. All right, and it is banded in bronze, which is which is interesting. The horn that they have, um, that they actually are claiming is, you know, Mance has a horn. It's not this mm -hmm. one, and no. so this is the one that's given to Sam, and so everyone believes Sam actually has that horn. Um, and you've right. often said that maybe 
the horns that there could be some misconception switch. in their yeah switch or misconception in their use or, or whatever because right yeah I mean that's just a theory and I think I think it, I think it'd be cool right if if the thorn if the horn they think is dragon binder is actually the horn of winter and then you know the the horn that we think is the horn of winter is actually dragon binder right it's just be it'd be cool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay so and then so here here we go here's the, the actual description of the cloak so we get this um He's rubbing that between his fingers. He, he has the fabric out. It was good wool, thick, a double weave, damp, but not rotted. So it's damp, but not rotted, which means, again, it's recent. It's, it is not, right. it hasn't had time to, to rot. Um, it could have not been in the ground long, and it was dark. So then he's looking even closer. Not dark. It was black. All right. So, um, yeah. So he knew what he had. He had a, a, a cloak of a sworn brother of the Night's Watch. Uh, that like like that was the cloak that this stuff was buried in. So, I I don't know, man. It's it, it is definitely a a mystery. I think the other big thing is is how did Ghost find it? That's the second part to this. Mm -hmm. What are you th thoughts on that? I mean, when he looks up at John and he gives him that look, John describes it as different. It's, you know, Ghost has looked at right. him a lot. Like quite often, he's he and Ghost have stared at each other, but this time it was different. There was something right. fierce and terrible about it. And there's red eyes, you know, and so people will go to right. and, and and ghosts and it, well, and you go back to the beginning, right? When when ghost is running off, uh, and John keeps calling him back, and then he just, he just goes off. So like something's obviously going on with the ghost. Well, and you know, let's take some new information we have. So we were given some new information, kind of on about animals and the North, right? Mm -hmm. uh, remember in Fire and Blood, we learned that when Queen Allison tried to fly her dragon over the wall, she couldn't do it. Yeah, it, it wouldn't work. So. Right. Here's a situation when, in which a ghost is acting really weird north of the wall. So I think it's you know that's kind of that's kind of cool to to think about. There's maybe maybe a similarity between the two. Like there's something going on with magic uh, north of the wall that's causing these like pretty rare animals to act uh, you know differently. That's a good point. Um, yeah. I mean maybe it's just something 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 to uh, consider. Um, but yeah, so Ghost is basically almost drawn to these things, and that he he wants to do it. Maybe it is. Maybe he smells. Maybe he does smell Benjamin, right? And the other, you know, that's something else to consider. Uh, if this is if this is relatively fresh, and you know, if people think it's Benjamin that that found it, if you go down that that rabbit hole, well, if this is recent, then that means Benjamin's. I mean, Benjamin's like alive and out there. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, relatively, relatively soon, because how many months have gone by between the beginning of the series uh, when Benjamin goes missing almost immediately and where we're at now? I mean, we're into the second book. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So that no, means I so if if the, if it if it was Benjamin and maybe he only did it like a, a couple week or a couple weeks ago. Then where was he at for that entire first book when he was he was gone? He would have been around here somewhere. Yeah, you know the thing that confused. I'm gonna read something to you that I think you're gonna find really interesting. Um, just as we try to try to look at the context of, of all this and John's pursuit, uh, ghost pursuit, him following ghost to this this dragon glass. I've often I'm gonna start with this and then I promise you I'll get right back to the chapter here. But the it's like the children of the forest are they 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 do make a pack with the first men and i think it's we don't really know it's all kind of vague and there's there's a lot of years that could be like they were mm -hmm. first fighting them they were cutting down their weirwoods and then they come to an agreement um and so i've always kind of wondered and we, what we saw on the show is that they as maybe possibly a part of their fight with the first men that they created the others maybe that seems right. to be what's implied right so i don't know let me let me, let me read this so I, I say that and then let me read this here so um john is realizing ghost is he, he has this thought he says when the dead came walking ghost knew he woke me he warned me and he's he can tell ghost wants him to go with him um this is when he starts to kind of follow him so uh, he's going past the guard. He gets past him saying he has to go get a pail of water. John slips sideways between two sharpened stakes while Ghost slid beneath them. Uh, let me move on down here. The camp sounds faded behind him. The night was black. The slope steep, stony, and uneven. A moment's inattention would be a sure way to break an ankle or his neck. 
What am I doing? He asked himself as he picked his way down. Here we go. The trees stood beneath him, warriors armed in bark and leaf. So the trees stood beneath him, warriors armored in bark and leaf, deployed in their silent ranks, awaiting the command to storm the hill. <coughs> Say what? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, there's just too many. Like, let me keep going. Um, black, they seemed. It was only when his torchlight brushed against them that John glimpsed a flash of green. So many different things. Because I go back and forth on the children, right? Do they seem black? And then once the light hits them, no, okay. That, I, I'm thinking everything or that's going on. Or they shimmer, right, or something, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm also thinking everything that's going on in Blood Raven's cave, I've said multiple times, is too too dark down there. It's too much darkness. It looks bad. It doesn't seem right. But then you got George writing stuff like this, like, well, the, the, those trees, which are armored, um, you know, in, in bark and leaf, it's just a connection to the children of the forest. I mean, leaf is a character we actually will meet later on, you know, it, and, and the whole, the whole thing is that they are connected to nature in that way. And they, they're children of the forest. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> excuse me. So the, they, they then, um, yeah. So we get that flash of green faintly. He heard the sound of water flowing over rocks, ghost vanished, in the underbrush, John struggling after him, listening uh, to the call of the brook, to the leaves sighing in the wind, branches clutched at his cloak, while over uh, while overhead thick limbs uh, twinged together and shut out the stars. So yeah, that might seem insignificant, but like when you start to think of like the mystery of, of who is leading Ghost, and y there's like that is a connect there's 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 references to green almost this green site um there's references to the children of the forest uh you know we're talking about stuff from the dawn age we're at a significant place called the fist of the first men so it's it's still kind of a mystery but there are hints i think that would say we are being led to this uh this this cache and it could be the children i mean i get, the whole thing here is is are the children working to reclaim the, the land south of the wall or or is this uh, a, a redemption tour <laughs> are they or do they not care at all i mean i i go to the extremes on that right i don't know man I, so i think that is just i find that interesting i also find it interesting that these trees that are there that they're armored right and that they look like they're ready to storm or that they're ready to to approach you know to to move upon the fist of the first men Later on, that actually happens, except for it's not the trees, right? It's the White Walkers. But then you go back to, I mean, we have thing, we have whites, we have cold hands who seemingly uh, is under the control of of the children, or 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 works with them, or for them, or, or something like a cold white, but yet is not a thrall of the others. So I don't know, man. It's it's just a lot. It's 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 still very 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 uh, complex, and and I don't know. People have different ideas, uh, you know, on it, but it's one of the great mysteries. It's good. I was... Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, I think it's a, it's a great question to start with because it's still one of the big mysteries. I mean, I mean, you, you, there's so many other, there's other rabbit holes to, you know, to, to go down, you know, to, to, to go down. As